Hello, everyone. It's me, Jordan Smith, the voice and the astrologer behind this YouTube channel, Nonconformist Conscience. Before I jump into this week, and there's a few things that I want to like really discuss whenever it pertains to the astrology of this week, and I want to do my due diligence, there's a couple of things I want to mention before I do that, which is the first thing is I have the cancer birthday special. Come see me. If you're a cancer, you can find that on my website. And the other one is that on the 28th, I will no longer have a summer solstice special. And I think that this is me personally, a really good time to have that reading. If you are someone who wants to understand what these transits are reflecting in your own natal chart, especially in regard to what I'm about to speak about for this week. So you can go on to my website and book that. <clears throat> but I want to jump into this week. And typically, I talk about things on personal levels instead of collective levels. And Something that I have been wanting to talk about more and more is about the reemergence of natural law. I feel like it is something that is not talked about enough, especially with what is being reflected around the world right now. And I'm not going to get into like politics or anything like that, but I do want to touch on a few things. I did make a video last week. Um, where I talked a little bit about this pertaining to Uranus and its nodal axis and Jupiter and Saturn through these transits. But this week we have Ceres who is really aspecting and highlighting the Venus square, the nodes um, transit. And to me, this is something that should be be spoken about, especially when pertaining to natural law and what is wanting to emerge right now within the collective. So Ceres as an asteroid reflects the great mother, the great mother who nurtures us back to our soul nature. And when you look at Ceres in your chart, it's speaking to what is meant to be nurtured <clears throat> in your life as a way to get in touch with your actual soul nature. And what I mean by soul nature is our soul nature on the inception of our soul, coming from that which we come from, however you want to classify this or speak about it. It is pure emotion, meaning that there has been no distortions around the emotional dynamics that the, so the soul is coming in with. It hasn't had any type of conditioning. And the type of conditioning that we've had lifetime after lifetime impacts us on a soul level and on our soul nature of the ability to understand our pure emotion. If we think about it in natural times, there was conditioning that happened, but we were totally rooted within the natural law of giving, sharing, and inclusion. Meaning that there were not distortions of an exclusionary behavior, behavior or nature. The best way to think about this is giving, sharing, and inclusion really can be expansive when you start thinking about the totality of that naturally occurring law. One of the ways to be within that is to understand that plant life <clears throat> and animal life is no different than us. It's still sentient. Its consciousness has a different type of awareness because of the structure that it's in. But animals and plants are sentient, and it doesn't mean that they are less than us because their consciousness is different. It's structured different. It's still pure emotion. We can see this reflected in nature. It's observable in nature. Um, I was talking to one of my friends last night about whenever 
to demonstrate this is that um, when my dog was passing away back in February, there was a stray cat that has now adopted my family. But while my dog was passing, she had never had interaction with my dog that was passing. And she would come in and lay with my dog throughout the week of her being on hospice as a way to nurture her. And it's because they were connected with the pure emotion. What you saw is what you get. And that cat was there to help facilitate this process of transition for my dog to let her know it was okay to be afraid, but she didn't have anything to be afraid of. All of these things. And this, these are two different species of animals. And this reflects the Piscean dynamic of pure emotion. And it's important to understand this. So there's not the distortion of conditioning around my cat that's now adopted us thinking that my dog was less than her. She just wanted to be there. And so it's observed in nature through plants and animals that this is something that is naturally occurring this principle of giving, sharing, and inclusion. The distortions that happen through man-made law or human-made law, okay, is one wherein it's exclusionary. So us believing that plant and animal life is less sentient to um, gender roles and societal constructs around this that women are less than men or women don't deserve to get paid as much as men or um, women need to submit to men because they're inferior to men. It's also reflected in um, gender constructs, not just gender roles, but the constructs held within it dealing with sexuality, that there's a belief that people shouldn't be queer this or that, these are all distortions of the natural law of giving, sharing, and inclusion. Another example of a distortion would be other races are better than some other races or um, that the earth that we live on isn't sentient and that we, don't, we can just take everything we want from her um, and not have consequences. These are all distortions of giving, sharing, and inclusion. And it's seen within the collective. On a personal level, this can simply be, I'm a child and whenever I am experiencing big emotions, my parents want me to suppress my pure emotion of what, whatever is being triggered inside of me because it induces insecurity for them. That's excluding the child's emotional reality because the parents don't want to um, deal with whatever's arising for them as the child is experiencing this. It's not rooted in giving, sharing, and inclusion. It's excluding someone's nature the best way to understand when there's a distortion of natural law is when one feels like for being themselves on some level, whether I was born a certain color or I was born, um, you know, queer, or if I'm more sensitive and express myself, it's the distortion is wherever one feels like they could be judged or persecuted for just being themselves, their actual nature, who they naturally are. That is where the distortion of this naturally occurring law of giving, sharing, including comes in. We can see it with men and women. Men have been taught, they've learned through the distortion of this, that they need to deny or suppress their own emotional reality because it's not manly. And there's a lot of men who I know, who I've talked to, who end up being able to open up to a woman easier than they can around their friends that are men. And it's because it feels weird and awkward or the other men in their lives don't know how to hold space for that man to express himself. On the flip side for women, when they're expressing their emotions, there's a lot of projections that can be thrown around a woman being 
sensitive or crazy or hysterical for ex for feeling what's coming up, for expressing and accessing their own emotional nature. And so I really wanted to emphasize this as a bottom line with the core dynamics that are going on this week, especially when we're pulling Ceres and Capricorn into the mix. And so Ceres is retrograde right now, meaning that this is an individuating function, something that could have the propensity to speed up our evolution, to have an evolutionary leap. And the way that that occurs is through the retrograde function of reliving some key moment or some core dynamic as a way to resolve it. And with Ceres and Capricorn, we're thinking of the archetype of Capricorn. What here is needing to be nurtured? What is needing to be looked at on personal and collective levels? Capricorn can correlate with patriarchal man-made conditioning, suppression, repression, um, judgment and guilt. It can be where we experience oppressive situations and oppressive situations can just be I lived in a home where if I talked about how I felt, I was told that I needed to get over it. There's all types of ways that this can occur. It's looking at on the collective level, the incorrect judgments and judgmental behavior that are the distortions of the natural law of giving, sharing, and inclusion. So it's looking at the social structure through the beliefs, the constructs, the taboos, the laws, and that within it on cultural, familial, religious levels that are actually distortions of natural law. Whereas the natural expression of Capricorn on a collective level is where society, the social structure, Capricorn, is defined by the natural laws, and one of them being giving, sharing, and inclusion, to where the beliefs, the constructs, the laws, the taboos are structured around giving, sharing, and inclusion. And so Ceres retrograde in the sign of Capricorn this week is reflecting this deep need on a collective level to nurture the restructuring process. And this is facilitated by Ceres ruler Saturn and Pisces, the need to culminate dynamics that are not rooted in experiencing Pisces pure emotion, the experience of suppressing it or repressing it and the distortions that play out on collective levels that are rooted in exclusion. On personal levels, it's looking at that, but in a more condensed version. So Ceres retrograde <clears throat> is asking for us to do the healthy expression of Capricorn to self-reflect on individual and collective levels of on our emotional dynamics that's pulling in the polarity of Capricorn, Cancer, and to not suppress what comes up this week for us. Because this week, Ceres is moving and building into a square to the nodal axis as well, just like Venus is. Where Venus, it will be exact on the 26th tomorrow. So Ceres in Capricorn is asking for a collective emotional maturation process. And this is done through not just self-reflecting on the choices and the incorrect judgment or the distortions of our conditioning, how we've structured reality through our beliefs, our taboos, our laws, our constructs, all of these things. But to also, to heal this, Saturn and Pisces, the need to take accountability and responsibility for what has played out. And with series building into this square to the nodes, it is highlighting the south node um, dynamics of Libra 
on some level, we have a collective memory. Our collective soul has a memory of being rooted in the natural expression of Libra, giving, sharing, and inclusion. But right now, it's also being highlighted where these distortions have absolutely taken place, and it is seen and observed in nature right now, within the totality of the ways in which we've structured our societies and the collective as a whole. And that's part of pulling in Saturn and Pisces. And the need to culminate this and to dissolve this to get in touch with more timeless and universal principles that are rooted in the collective memory of living in natural times, of giving, sharing, and inclusion. So that this restructuring can take place. And so there's a lot that can be triggered on personal and collective levels during this time period as a way to facilitate in this process of making new choices. Ceres, with its opposition, its polarity of Cancer, is about balancing Libra, that square, and reharmonizing with masculine and feminine energies of not trying to suppress the natural feminine Cancer principle that's held within all of us has nothing to do with gender and the social construct of that. The feminine principle is one of nurturing and pure emotion and tapping into that. And Ceres and Capricorn wants us to gain wisdom through this self-reflective process on collective levels and individual levels. And that can only be done through tapping into our pure emotion of the things that get triggered, that are bringing up cross currents within our emotional nature. And this is so we can recover our soul nature of being able to express this, to feel it, to heal it, to not suppress, to be in alignment, to harmonize. So I felt like this was really important to speak about because Ceres is such a team player this week, so to speak. So on the 25th, Mercury in Cancer is going to oppose Ceres. And Mercury in Cancer at this time is going to be ruled by a moon in Aquarius. So it's pulling in Uranus and Taurus dynamics as well. So what does this full phase opposition represent? It represents self-reflection on the one hand, the need to go within on an emotional level and to gain knowledge through the direct experience of feeling our emotions and what comes up. And it helps us to throw off where we've denied or repressed our emotional nature. It's where we get to self-reflect on the past and the present moment in order to know what needs to be opposed, what's not working, what's been learned. Have you learned some type of guilt that's not natural? Has your judgment from that knowledge created incorrect judgment in the ways in which you deal with your own emotional reality or the choices that you make? This is really reflecting the need to do this so that way it can pull in Capricornian wisdom to help with the restructuring of our consciousness at this time. And the moon is facilitating this process. It's in Aquarius, so it's bringing this objective awareness to help liberate from where we've over-identified with any type of learned guilt or judgment or anything that's impeded on knowing our pure emotion, our soul nature. So it helps us to jettison this from within. And it gives us almost a bird's eye like view if we have the willingness to consciously work with this. The other dynamic is it's going to pull in Uranus and Taurus, which is, which is this transformative process of the only way to understand what we emotionally need is to experience our emotional reality. And through nurturing that process, we get to learn how to validate ourselves or we get to cultivate a lifestyle change because our values and our needs are now in alignment with our authentic nature. And so it's this Uranian transformative process of our relationship to ourselves. 
on a collective level, this is about us learning about the distortions that are at play so we can liberate from them in order to align the collective conscious with values that are in alignment with giving, sharing, and inclusion. That way, a collective lifestyle change can occur. Venus on the 26th is going to be exact square the nodal axis. Venus is the ruler of that south node. And so this can really trigger and highlight where extremes have played out in our lives. Where maybe we're going back and forth from old dynamics of externalizing our value or how, needing someone to emotionally validate us all the time. Um, it's where we can um, experience understanding when someone wasn't able to hear where we were coming from or lessons in knowing whom to share with or who to express ourselves to as an act of inwardly nurturing ourselves. It can be where dynamics of where we're playing certain roles within our relationships that are creating inequalities, not based on equity, could be highlighted to get us to get into the emotional nature of where does this stem from? Meaning, why is my security lying within that dynamic? Why is my emotional security lying within that dynamic? And what can I do to make a different choice. So the resolution for Venus square the nodes is actually the North node in Aries, which is about being a champion and a warrior for our own personal emotional growth. And as we do that, we gain new knowledge and inner knowledge about ourselves through that direct experience. And remember that Mercury is really helping facilitate this process. And so is Ceres, speaking to this need to nurture in order to emotionally mature in a responsible way. And as we do this work, the North Node is ruled by Mars and Taurus, and that is actually sextile to Venus, which is really about reharmonizing and rebalancing. So as we do the North Node work of creating new patterns of emotional self-reliance, that sextile between Mars and Taurus, self-reliance, and Venus, the ruler of that, and um, Cancer, we get to align ourselves with our our natural values to create these new patterns. And then it does pull in the healthy expression of the South Node. We get to rebalance and reharmonize. During this time, Venus, while she's squaring the nodes, is going to be ruled by a Pisces moon, which really speaks to the way through all of this and the choices that we are needing to make in order to create correct judgment and whatever it is the path that we're wanting to take right now to heal we absolutely have to get into our pure emotion pisces and as we do so it cultivates that healing principle of pisces and it helps dissolve the old structures the old dynamics that have impeded on knowing our nature and of making healthy choices that are right based in equity and giving, sharing, and inclusion, equality. <clears throat> the moon during this, that Pisces moon is also going to be squared Jupiter and Gemini, which was ruled by that Mercury I just talked about. So it's this symbiosis that can happen that's being reflected if we take a chance on exploring these inner dynamics. And if we take a chance on that, and we have the courage to do it, to do what's actually natural, okay? That's not going against our nature. It has the ability to help us to understand where there might have been learned beliefs that have impeded upon us going within. And it also helps us to expand upon our inner knowledge that's more rooted in natural law. 
Pisces and Gemini are part of the mutable axis. The mutable axis correlates to natural law and the ability to be adaptable within nature. So this really helps us to observe these dynamics and to correlate them and, and to have the direct experience of this expansive process where as we create new patterns, it just expands our knowledge and it actually is helping us to recover our knowledge that's rooted in natural law. I spoke about that. That's in that video from last week um, where I went over Uranus in the notes if you wanna know more about that process. But <clears throat> Jupiter is ruled by that Mercury and Mercury is trying Saturn. And that trine helps us again to harmonize, but it can really help us come into awareness if we take the necessary action to understand where certain dynamics on an emotional level are at a standstill that's stemming from our learned conditioning. And so the need again to go within, it's this repeating signature throughout this week. And then on the 29th, Venus is going to oppose Ceres. So again, it's this function of the need to compare and contrast the past to the present through Ceres and Capricorn, self-reflecting in, or in order to nurture this process of emotional self-reliance, to throw off old values or needs that we had that aren't in alignment. That could be Saturn and Pisces Ceres ruler illusionary or delusive in nature stemming from our conditioning. And as this is occurring, Uranus and Mercury are also sextile. So it's helping again to liberate from these learned values that have affected our emotional reality. And it has a transformative process and quality to it that's healing through liberation and dissolving and it's through just taking accountability for our own healing and going within on a deep level in order to recover our pure emotion. And so when we do this, we're able to discern and to make correct judgment through self-reflecting on when we when we had it. So all of this is highlighted. It's as if the past is being seeded into our present moment this week in order for us to be self-determined Capricorn to make new choices that are in alignment with our actual soul nature. And so I just, I wanted to speak about this process. I just don't hear natural law talked about enough. And on a collective level, we are absolutely needing to make different choices and to really embrace all that I've been talking about in this video. That way there can be reharmonization within the social structures, within our relationship to this beautiful earth, Gaia, in order to, to just reharmonize with our collective soul nature. It has the ability to be really healing, but there are extremes being played out right now. And that is highlighted by the South Node in Libra. And there is a dynamic within that, that it takes an extreme to counteract an extreme in order for balance and harmonization to take place after. And so that is really about balancing the masculine and feminine principles in a healthy way that is rooted in giving, sharing, and inclusion. So it's Balancing the need for correct action and responsible action, masculine, and our courage. And then, <clears throat> on the other hand, the need to nurture what's going on inside of us and to fortify this, to strengthen it, to not be afraid of our emotions. Or when we have made incorrect judgment, it serves a purpose, it serves a function to actually help us to rebalance during this time. And so I want all of us to do our part on individual levels. And I feel like we do have a responsibility to do this. We chose to reincarnate in this time period for these reasons. And 
it's about learning that there is unity and diversity, Jupiter and Gemini, you know, about to trine um, the South Node and Libra. It's it's about recalling this. It's about recovering this. It's about looking at our grief and looking at our anger, the grief and anger, the sadness that comes from not being heard or listened to or when injustices or inequalities arise how that's impacted us, how there could be a fear of judgment. This is a week to go deep and to honor what is being triggered um, externally so that an internal change and transformation can occur through recovery this. So this is your weekly forecast and I just wanted to speak on this. Again, I have been saying this lately, but I feel it's necessary with Pisces and Cancer dynamics. Be gentle with yourself. You're evolving. You are growing. You're going to make mistakes. The value totally is in the effort. I love that JWG said that. It was so simple and life-changing, and it is a naturally occurring law. This is... a week that could be so healing and transformative. And it is, it's about when we tap into natural law, the things that are observable and that we can intuit to feel true, we can look at our own emotional dynamics and how we've structured our reality around that. It is observed and our environment on personal and collective levels and this is a week to really observe this and then to feel what comes up as a way to cultivate natural wisdom and an emotional maturation process um, a recovery process a healing process and hopefully the more of us that do this it will help to change the collective vibration as well it's I was talking to one of my teachers, it's a marathon and not a sprint, and it really is about choice making. I had asked a question about this, actually. I was reminded by my teacher that ultimately returning to giving, sharing, and inclusion in these natural laws and timeless universal principles are not fated. It is a karma of choice making on a humanitarian level, on a collective level. And I want to make sure that when I take my last breath, that I did everything I could to talk about this and to do my own work dealing with this. Because I feel a responsibility being here. And as I learn more about this, I want to talk more about it because it's been beneficial to me and I feel that it could be beneficial to so many others own personal evolution and healing. So this is your forecast for this week. I hope to see some of you in my Zoom. Um, and I love reading your natal charts and answering all of your questions. I love whenever a soul comes in and is getting down to business and is wanting to really work on their karmic dynamics and their evolutionary dynamics. It's something that makes my heart really happy to see someone confronting things that a lot of other people are fearful of confronting. It's actually really rare. It is, and that's sad to me. So I love whenever I have individuals come in that are doing this, um, and I hope to see more of you. I will talk to you all soon.